Hi, I'm Tammy Craig and I'm a certified professional aromatherapist. My certification is from the Applied Aromatic Institute with Leanne King. I'm now enrolled in her level three program and I'm going to be sharing with you a lesson about honey, which is one of the carriers for our first module in level three. So I thought it would be really neat if I stood out here in all of our apiary beekeeper gear and you could see our two hives. So later on in this lesson, I will show you footage, video, and still pictures from earlier in the season. We don't have a lot of honey this time of year, but I still wanted you to have a chance to see the hives. We've named our hives after herbs and plants based on the lid. So we have blue tansy and green mint. And today we're gonna just do a brief inspection before we get into the winter. During the winter time, you don't open your hives a lot because the bees have to keep the hives at a very particular temperature. Where we live, there's not a lot of fluctuation, but there's still a little bit. So, hello, welcome to the lesson on honey in your module one, and thank you for joining me. Hi, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed getting to have a peek at our two hives. We've really enjoyed having our bees and learning so much about the life of a bee and honey. So as I said, standing with the hives, this is your honey lesson. Practitioners have used honey in remedies for over 5,000 years. Many cultures had some sort of myth to explain the immortal sweetness. They believed it had to have come from the gods. Prior to honey, fruit was the sweetest thing humans had tasted. Since the beginning of recorded history, Egyptians, Sumerians, Babylonians, Assyrians, Greeks, Romans, they all used honey and recorded using it in some way. They would have found it from wild hives, and with time, they learned to mimic hives from old logs and tree trunks, but would still destroy the hive and colony in the process of harvesting. In the mid-19th century, a clergyman and apiarist named Lorenzo Langstrom designed the collateral hive. This hive is what many still use today. And in fact, at the beginning of this lesson, when I showed you our apiary, we use those hives as well. It allows the honey to be harvested from combs and then the combs replaced without destroying the colony. Honey was depicted in ancient cuneiform writings as well as hieroglyphics. It was also a form of currency, tribute, or offerings, and the German peasants even used it to pay the feudal lords. Let's talk honey flow next. It is dependent on your season and your hive management. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as a supply or period of availability of floral nectar suitable for bees to convert into honey. Another way honey flow is explained is it is the time when bees have ready access to abundant resources, allowing them to dramatically accelerate the creation of honey within the hive. So how do you know there's a honey flow taking place? The behavior of the bees. There will be obvious signs of activity and many bees are out foraging. You'll see the forager bees coming and going. A typical colony produces 60 to 80 pounds of surplus honey a year. It's called surplus honey because it's the honey that they can do without. It's important that beekeepers leave honey in the hive as winter approaches because the bees won't leave their hive much and depending on where the beehive is located, there may not be a lot of resources. But we can still take some surplus honey. In fact, some of these photos and videos that you're seeing was our very first harvest in the summer of 2021. We were very new beekeepers and we got less than a pound of honey. You weigh honey, it's not done in volume by the way, but we were excited to have a little bit of honey to taste and sample. All right, so back to some of the facts here. The average worker bee makes one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in a lifetime. Hopefully that was clear enough, one twelfth. That is about six weeks long, their lifetime. During a good honey flow, bees may store five, 10, or even 20 pounds of honey in a day. The main factors that influence honey production are the health of the hive, 
availability of flowering plants and space in the hive. As a general estimate, it can take a production colony, which is about nine to 10 brood frames drawn out, about a day per frame to build and fill the first time around. If you use an extractor for harvesting once the comb is ripe, then the bees can refill the entire super within five to eight days, depending on whether there's still nectar flow. This is because there is minimal damage to the comb with this process. For the number of folks out there, another source stated, on average, it will take between seven days to two months for bees to produce comb and fill it with honey. But a strong established colony during a strong honey flow or nectar flow can draw out a full 10 frame deep box and fill it with honey in as little as three days, sometimes even quicker, in less than 24 hours. Bees require a very large amount of nectar to produce comb and fill it so quickly. It takes around 40 pounds of nectar for bees to make one comb weighing one pound. This is before they even begin to fill the cells with nectar or honey. Since wax is the basis for honeycomb, bees will consume around six to eight pounds of honey to produce only one pound of wax. Also, they require around five pounds of nectar to produce one pound of honey. Here is an image of the anatomy of a bee. This will be helpful as we discuss honey production. The first step of honey production begins when bees collect flower nectar with their proboscis, which is several mouth parts that come together in a straw shape and store it inside their extra stomach called the crop or honey stomach. Inside the crop, the nectar gets broken down into simple sugars that makes it more fit for long-term storage. Once the forager bees get to the hive, the nectar is either transferred to honey pots located outside of the hive so other bees have access to it, or transferred directly into a processor or house bees crop. Then the nectar is regurgitated from bee to bee until it is finally placed inside the honeycomb. Contrary to what people like to say, they're not throwing up the honey, but processing the nectar. Remember, they have a special stomach for carrying the nectar, different than the stomach they process their own food in. While in the honey stomach, it receives several different enzymes that all contribute to the transformation process. When bees regurgitate the nectar, they force it back up through a tube in their throat. When the nectar is about 20% water, it is deposited into the honeycomb. Then bees work by fanning the honeycomb with their wings to reduce the water to 17 to 18%. At this point, the bees will seal it with a liquid secreted from their abdomen, which hardens into beeswax. Once the honey is sealed, it can be kept indefinitely for bees to feed on during the cold months or it can be harvested by beekeepers. In aromatherapy, herbology, dynamic blending, and other practices that use honey, it is best to use raw honey. Raw honey is honey that hasn't been filtered, pasteurized, or processed. The US government doesn't officially define raw honey, but it essentially is honey as it exists in the hive. It also has more complex flavor than pasteurized honey, and it will have a variety of flavors based on the nectar the bee has collected. And by the way, the honey will have a variation in color as well. Examples are acacia, alfalfa, buckwheat, eucalyptus, sage, wildflower, orange blossom, even poison oak. Another fun fact is that the darker the honey, the more antioxidants that it has. As you can see in these images, there is a variety of color. And when we see the image in a moment that has just the two jars, this is a friend of mine, same hives, harvested at different times of the season, one dark, one light. Raw honey contains several essential minerals, such as calcium, iron, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and sulfur. It also contains small traces of copper, which is beneficial in the absorption of iron. Aside from the protein content, honey contains vitamins B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, and C. The amount of vitamins varies from the quality of the pollen and nectar used in making the honey. 
We're getting near the end of this lesson on honey. And just like when Leanne is instructing us, a lesson on a subject that's an oil, a carrier, an herb, a component ingredient of some kind that we're going to use in a product, we've got to cover tried and true uses. So here is the list for honey. May promote wound and burn healing. Might help ward off acid reflux. May be used as a cough syrup. May be used as a sugar substitute and is actually being tested as an eye lubricant for dry eyes. Additional conditions that might be helped with honey include hiccups, stress, weakness, bedwetting, frequent urination, bad breath, the effects of a hangover, teething pain in babies older than one year, you don't give honey to babies under a year old, eczema and dermatitis, coughs and asthma, cuts, sleep disturbances, vision problems, stomach ulcers, diarrhea, vomiting, high blood pressure, obesity, jaundice, arthritis, and allergies. The main properties of honey are antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. It is an antioxidant right up there with apples, strawberries, oranges, and spinach, and it is an antiseptic. Welcome to the Central Coast of California. I know the lighting is kind of funny where I'm sitting, but I wanted you to be able to see the front of my two hives. And I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and hopefully you can hear all their noise. Kind of cool, huh? If you're not used to being around bees. So I'm sitting in my backyard and the first clip of this video for the honey lesson for module one, we shot uh, late fall, early winter, before we closed up the hives for the winter, because you keep your hives closed in the winter time for the most part because of various weather conditions depending on where you live. But it's springtime now and we have opened our hives and we know that we have activity and we've seen nectar and we've seen capped honey already. We've seen eggs, we've seen larvae, we've even already seen baby bees emerging out of their capped cells. We have not actually seen our queen, but all the evidence points that she is there. So I thought I would wrap up this lesson on honey by sitting here in the backyard and letting you see and hear the bees. So sorry for a little bit of squintiness, uh, but that's what happens outside in the sun. The last thing that I'm going to share with you is an article that I found from the Mayo Clinic of evidence that they found supporting the benefits of using honey. So I'm going to actually read this article to you so that I get all of their information accurate and making sure that I'm quoting them accurately. So here we go while the bees are behind us. You can keep watching them or listening to me, whatever you want. From the Mayo Clinic. Honey is a sweet fluid made by honeybees using the nectar of flowering plants. There are about 320 different varieties of honey which vary in color, odor, and flavor. Honey contains mostly sugar, as well as a mix of amino acids, vitamins, minerals, iron, zinc, and antioxidants. In addition to the use as a natural sweetener, honey is used as an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antibacterial agent. People commonly use honey orally to treat coughs and topically to treat burns and promote wound healing. Here are some specific conditions they found research for honey. Cardiovascular disease. Antioxidants in honey might be associated with reduced risk of heart disease. Cough. Studies suggest that eucalyptus honey, citrus honey, and other varieties can act as a reliable cough suppressant for some people with upper respiratory infections and acute nighttime cough. In fact, I had found this true uh, back when I had kids at home. I remember taking one of them to the pediatrician one time, and the doctor said, you know, if you wanna just give your child spoonfuls of honey, you do not have to go buy over-the-counter cough syrup. Just try honey. And we liked that way better. And it tasted, you know, definitely tasted better too. All right, going on. For your GI disease, evidence suggests honey might help relieve GI tract conditions such as diarrhea associated with issues that you may have. Honey might also be effective as part of oral rehydration therapy. Neurological disease. Studies suggest that honey might offer antidepressant, anticonvulsant, and antioxidant benefits. 
In some studies, honey has been shown to help prevent memory disorders. Wound care. Topical use of medical grade honey has been shown to promote wound healing, particularly in burns. They continue to say results might vary because there are no standardized methods for producing honey or verifying its quality. Honey is generally safe in adults and children older than age one, and we had stated that earlier in this video as well. It might be helpful in treating burns, coughs, and possibly other conditions. So just really cool that there is studies, there are studies being done and evidence is being found to support these additional ways of supporting our body and our body systems. So the bees are still back there doing their thing. As I wrap up about honey, I thought you could see the hives instead and see all the activity of the bees coming in and out. I know I'm still quite a few feet away, but I am not outfitted in protective gear, so I am keeping my distance, but they are very busy and there is nectar and pollen coming in and then more bees going out. That hive is very active with eggs and larvae and baby bees capped and coming out. And we've seen both pollen being stored, nectar, as well as capped honey. So we're looking forward to a good season moving forward. Thanks so much for joining me on this lesson for honey. Honey is a carrier that we're learning about in module one of level three at the Applied Aromatic Institute. I will be doing a second teaching video and it will cover thyme syrup and thyme honey as two products that I actually made during the winter months when I was sick. And you'll actually see in those videos that well, I was coughing a little bit during those and both those products definitely helped me feel better. And as we just heard from the Mayo Clinic, honey is definitely a benefit for coughing. So enjoy and I will let us close out on the bees.